Hello and welcome to Color Multimedia Enterprises. My name is Luke and I'm going to be showing you a project called Twine Edit. This is from the pronunciation of the project itself, inspired by Twine. And it is, in fact, a, a an application that allows you to create Twine or Twi source code files which can of course be used in t the twine editor and the only editor in this circumstance that it supports is twine 1.4 so those of you who like using twine 2 well of course this application is not really for you now the aim of this project is to simply make it easier to organize your twine projects now i've always criticized twine for not really having a good organization and the find tool isn't a very good feature it only searches for titles as far as i'm concerned i don't think it even searches for tags so i don't even know why they're there The only reason why you have the tags in Twine is to specify whether or not a passage is a script, for example. Which is something that, again, is a bit silly. Now, regarding this, we have a variety of different features. Now, I haven't implemented tons of features just yet, but I will be showing you around this particular editor and showing you what it's all about. So welcome to Twine Edit. In order to create a new project you just create, go into file and then new project. Um, so I'm going to click now on that and I'm going to create a new project. Let's call it, yeah I'll just leave it at that, that close button doesn't work. And I'm going to project doesn't actually reset anything so it's probably not a good idea actually now that seems like it's actually bugs so what I will do which is of course something I should fix so I will create a new project and show you around <coughs> now at the moment I have no categories whatsoever. What I can do is modify the category. So I'll go over and click on that modify categories button there. I'm going to click add and I'm going to put new category in here and I'm going to put general menus there. Now the only way to save this category is to actually click into this list box here. Let's create another category going to call that let's say script as you can see I'm putting a tag script in there that's going to be seen by the twine engine that any passages with the tag script will make that a script so I'm going to click away from that and go on to the next one and then I'm going to do campaign. So we've got some campaign stuff here. So I'm not actually going to teach you how to create a Twine project because there are plenty of tutorials over on the wiki to show you exactly how to do that. Now here we've got the Twine Edit search functionality. Of course, this is kind of useless at the moment because we have no passages. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new passage. As you can see, there's um, an edit and delete function that just sort of appeared out of nowhere. We can double click it or we can click on that edit button. It doesn't matter and we can edit the passage. Now we can modify the title now there has to be 
a passage named start so that the twine project can identify that this is the starting passage I'm going to make a header and I'm going to say welcome to this random game this is some more text and I'm going to create a link this is a link and as you may notice I am using the pipe character or the vertical line whatever you want to call it and on the left side of that character I'm going to put in another passage and this is going to be a link to that passage with that title now because I haven't actually got that yet it's going to come up with this warning you have made links to passages that do not exist would you like to add them to the current category now so another passage oh yes I would like to so now we've got that passage and now we can start editing it. So it knows that the passages do not exist and then it will ask us to create them. If we were to modify this passage text, because it is case sensitive, it's going to, this is a completely different passage to that. So that's something to be careful of. Uh, another thing to think about is that when we modify the title of this passage, it's not going to come up with any errors. So it's not until we go back into the previous passage, which is this one, we will need to change this link and any other links to this passage should we decide to change this title. Now I am thinking of making a function um, in the menu at some point that will allow us to analyze the project and it will detect any missing links that are available in the project and it will ask us where the missing links are like uh, yeah so we'll, we'll have some so, some kind of separate window where we will be able to see those missing links <coughs> So that's a little bit of that, and of course you can put in HTML as well. So do span style, and then I'm, I can put in color here. And then I can close that span, and then I'm going to say this is green text. Because of course this is a hexadecimal value. And that would make this text green. <coughs> now there's, we don't need to save it because it saves it automatically when we exit the passage editor. Now, as you can see, when we reopen it, it doesn't actually show us any of the highlighting anymore. Now, it doesn't actually highlight until you actually start typing. So that's, again, something to be aware of. Now, as you can see, there are two different views. There's passage view and the JavaScript view. If we go over to JavaScript view, we'll see that the syntax highlighting changes slightly. Now, JavaScript view is designed to make it easier to see JavaScript functionality, JavaScript highlighting, so we can start doing things like var obj is equal to, and this is an object, and then we can do obj dot message is equal to hello something like that so it, it's just basically a way of changing the highlighting now for some reason that's really not working okay there we go but yeah, th that is basically just to change the appearance of the code editor, and as you can see, there are a few issues with it, which I will. I mean, it's, they're very minor issues. They're not exactly application breaking, so something to think about. Now, of course, we can open and save projects. When we save a project, it will save two files. It will generate the JSON file, which you'll be using to open the project later on. And 
there's also going to be another project or uh, another file that it produces and that's the twee source code file which you can of course then import into twine 1.4 or later so that you can of course modify and build that project now there is a build functionality here and it will basically produce it will basically produce a batch file so if we go over here the tree oh. so of course what we need to do first is we need to specify the path that our tree source engine is located so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to here and go over to downloads and go here and I'm just going to copy and paste this now we're going to leave a backslash out because it will automatically assign that otherwise it will come up with an error when we try to build it so now we can build it it will ask us to save the project first so we're going to go over to tutorial and start this and then it's going to ask us to give the html file so we're going to save that now it's generated a batch file which looks good and oh yeah okay i'll go there and then it'll open windows explorer for us and here's the build.batch file now i'm going to double click this and it's going to do a thing with the tweez file and what we're going to do is we're going to go over to here and as you can see we've got a new file and this will automatically open in here Bandstone color <laughs> is not working for some reason. Oh yes, of course, and that's because it doesn't like it when it's being generated using Twee and all that sort of stuff. So, which is what I'm going to go on to now. So, should you decide to use the build functionality in this project here, obviously we can use sugarcane as well if we wanted to. So. And I'll show you that for the purposes of this tutorial. And as you can see, it's uh, generated the file in sugarcane format instead. Now, the build functionality requires Python 2.7 to be installed on your computer. It also requires the Twee source code engine to be available on your computer as well. Now, if we go back, we go search on here, we've got the Twee core, and this is the Twee engine that I'm using. And I'm using this format here to produce the output HTML file that we're going to be using now unfortunately because this is such an old project and most of the core files haven't even been modified for two or so years that there has been a lot of changes to twine since then so twine is a lot more up to date when it comes to building projects than the actual Twee engine itself which is ironic considering then what I would recommend you do is instead produce the Twee file and it imports that Twee source code file if we go back to our test project here as you can see there's a tutorial.twee if we open that show us all of the projects that we have here so sorry the text that was produced by our twine edit here so this is the twee source code file that it's produced it knows that this is the start and if we were to open up twine by going here and opening it up like that what we can do is just import file and it will do this correctly so if we go 
verified all passages, no obvious problems. Yeah, okay, so now we're going to build the story and let's just build it somewhat. Yeah, let's just uh, build it in test documents. Let's build it over test.game.html. Okay, and as you can see, it actually works better. So now the span works better. Now, of course, and that, that's the difference between using the Twee source code engine versus Twine 1.4. I would highly recommend you still use Twine 1.4.2 to produce these things. But of course, if you d basically this project is designed to organize your project easier. It has syntax highlighting, which makes it easier for you to distinguish between what's going on between different code, especially if you're uh, developing things in JavaScript. And then there's going to be a lot more things going on in this project, I think, in the, in the near future. So eventually I will go ahead and produce more features but of course one of the main reasons why I produced this project is for my own sake as well so I will be developing a game using this eventually and yeah so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and of course as you can see there's the search functionality here so I'll just quickly show you how this works so you can search in title and in order to escape the search, what you need to do is just hit the escape key at the top of your keyboard and it will cancel out all of the results and reset everything within the current category. And what this does is it will search within the category that you selected. So if you select the category here now, as you can see. And you can, of course, search title, tags and content. So. As I said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and a small tutorial and to look at uh, Twine Edit. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.